Hello and welcome back to the channel and the last video of our mini series on making a simple model. To recap the last couple of videos, we went over how to prepare your art, the program Live 2D, and how to rig the art to move, and how to make toggles for your model, such as this and exporting it into VTube Studio so you can track it with your camera and set up your hotkeys for toggles. And finally, today we will be going over how to implement your model into other programs. I'll be showing you how to use it in Roll20 for your virtual tabletop RPG campaigns, on Discord as a video camera when talking to friends, as well as how to set it up in OBS for streaming, recording, or even using it as a virtual camera. So let's get straight into it and let's open up VTube Studio. All right, so here we are in VTube Studio. I have my model open and everything and connected to my phone for tracking. So obviously here you can see your model moving and everything, but we want to show it to other people and implement it into other programs. So first to do that, we're going to open up our settings here. And then we're going to go to the second tab here with the camera and scroll down a tad bit until we find virtual webcam config. So today we're going to be going over the virtual webcam config and spout 2 config. So make sure you have activate virtual webcam on and activate spout 2 on. Now you might need to mirror your video. It depends on which program you are putting it into, but most of the time, you can also mirror the video on the program that you're using, so feel free to turn these on or off if you want. And of course, to install either one, you can just click on the installation help here or install Spout 2 there. And it is pretty straightforward on how to set those up. But once you have those installed and activated, putting them into other programs is super, super, super simple. The difference between the two are a little bit different. Making your VTube Studio a virtual webcam allows you to use VTube Studio as a webcam, obviously. So anything where you can use a webcam like an OBS, Discord, or whenever you open up a site and it prompts you to like use your camera, like if you're on Zoom or something, then you can use the VTube Studio virtual webcam and have your VTuber model show up instead of your actual webcam. Spout 2 is a little different. Not everything takes a Spout 2, but if you do have something that does take Spout 2, I would recommend using that over the virtual webcam version of VTube Studio. For example, in OBS, you should be using Spout 2. It is the best output for VTube Studio, just for various reasons. We'll get into that later. But let's start with first putting our VTube Studio virtual webcam into Roll20. All right, so here I am in just a random game I opened up. To connect your VTube Studio webcam to Roll20, you're gonna need to go to the settings over here on the right panel. And we're gonna scroll down until we find audio and video right here. You're gonna click on that, and then you're gonna see all of this. Make sure that others can see your video. And um, if you want to, you can also see your own video. And then we're gonna go to configure devices. Now this is gonna pop up. It might look a little different from yours depending on what you have plugged into your PC. But for our video input source, just click on the drop down menu and it'll show you all of the cameras that you have available for you to pick. So my Elgato virtual camera is connected to my phone. My logic capture is like my actual webcam. And then VTube Studio cam is obviously our VTube Studio virtual camera. And then I also have OBS virtual camera, which we will go over. I'm gonna select the VTube Studio cam. And as you can see, my VTube Studio is here. I am moving and everything. And of course you can change your audio input here depending on whatever you have. And then just hit save changes. Now, when I click and drag the little player card thing here, we're going to click join voice and video and load and show your model up there. Of course, you can go back in the VTube studio and adjust how your character is in frame. Go back and change your background to match your background to wherever you are in your session. And then now while you're on the board playing around with your tokens and rolling dice, you can see you and your other friends and your other party members moving and talking along as your character makes everything a little bit more fun a little bit more interesting of course you can always go back to audio and video settings over on the side here and go to video display to change how you want the displays to look for yourself here you'll see do not mirror my own video honestly sometimes mirroring gets confusing usually i just ask whoever is watching my model usually i just ask whoever is in call with me to see if my model is the right way around or not but sometimes it doesn't matter you know and of course roll 20 is not the only site you can use the vtube studio virtual webcam for like i said earlier 
any site where you can use a webcam input, feel free to use VTube Studio webcam input instead. So now here we are in Discord. I am connected to a VC right now. I am alone, but it's okay. Discord is pretty straightforward. Just go down to the camera here, click on this little arrow button under the camera, and it'll give you all of your camera options here. Just click on VTube Studio Cam. You can preview your camera. I think if it shows up your model as mirrored, it'll look the, the right way to other people. I can't really remember, but j just ask other people that you're in VC with, okay? And then you can hit turn on camera and voila, your model will be there and everyone can see it while you're talking. Now, fun fact, if you guys did not know, we get a suggested activities here. Roll20 is actually on Discord now. Go into your game and then voila. You have your webcam down here. Hopefully your other party members also have their webcam down here. You guys can play Roll20 just straight in Discord. We go to settings, audio and video. You cannot add another webcam, unfortunately, and have double the webcams. But it's pretty cool, right? It's pretty cool. Now, let's talk a little bit more about OBS. All right, so here we are in OBS. I am on 30.2.3. I do have a bunch of random plugins, so I, I try to clear as much as I can. So if you see anything that you don't have, don't worry about it. But here is my blank scene here. We're gonna press the plus button and you should have spout to capture if you installed it correctly. So this is how we are going to use our model in OBS. Click on that. We're gonna create a new VTube Studio source. Now it'll automatically choose my VTube Studio because that's like my only Spout 2 instance right now. And then you just hit okay. Now we have our model in OBS. Now, what are the benefits of using Spout 2 over using maybe like a Windows capture or a game capture? There's a lot of reasons, okay. <laughs> Spout 2 will take um, less resources on your PC, but not only that, you can make it transparent easier and it does not show your menu if you're using your menu at all. So for example, if we use a Windows capture right now, you would see my little red button here that I have for toggles. And whenever I double click on the screen, you're going to see my menu pop out. If you use Spout 2, it will not show any of that up, just straight up your model. Now, if you want to make the background for your model invisible for VTube Studio, you're going to go to your backgrounds here and scroll down until you find color picker and you hit select. Now you're gonna wanna make sure it is transparent and capture and make this black, all the way to black. I've had a troubleshoot some things for friends before and they're like, why is my background not all transparent? It's cause they had it like slightly gray, make it all the way black, hex code 000000. Let's put in a background. I'm gonna slap in around image and put that under. Now, obviously it's not invisible, it's all black. If you double click on the Spout 2 VTube Studio to open up the properties, we're gonna change the composite mode to converted pre-multiplied alpha legacy. And that'll make it so that our background is invisible. Now doing it this way, if you have a model that has like all the rainbow colors you can't green screen it out properly this is the way to do it so just in general please use a spout too now to use obs as now obviously you can hit start streaming if you want to strengthen your model or start recording if you want to start recording but we're gonna hit start a virtual camera and that's gonna make it so that your obs whatever you're capturing right now whatever is on your screen you can use that as a virtual camera so the benefits of using obs as a virtual camera over vtube studio for example is if you wanted to add like a bunch of effects that you have in OBS that you don't have in VTube Studio or like random plugins you want to use. Me personally, I like to use shoes and I like to put it into OBS and I like to put it into OBS to use as a virtual camera that I use for Discord or whatever else I want to use shoes for. Just because shoes gives a lot of um, fancy little effects. But that is about it for setting everything up with virtual camera and Spout 2 with Discord, Roll20 and OBS. If you guys would like a more detailed tutorial on how I like to set up my model for streams specifically or videos, let me know. And now that you know how to use your model in other places, feel free to go and get crazy and use it everywhere. Now that you guys have the basics down, hopefully it'll inspire you guys to do some more creative, interesting things. Not only with toggles, but with whatever program you're trying to use VTube Studio with. For example, in VTube Studio, they have a setting over here on the camera tab right here called the visual effects. I have some visual effects already made, but you can make your model a lot more cinematic, especially for like when you're role playing and whatnot. Here is a more appropriate background. 
hand, but it adds a lot of cool effects. It makes things even more immersive. At least I like to think so. And if you use the OBS virtual camera, you can have even more flexibility with what you can do with your model and even add little extra things here and there onto the screen. You know, you can put like your hit points in the corner or maybe like an inventory on the side. VTube Studio 2, you can add objects. You can paste image files into the items folder and put in extra little silly little accessories and whatnot to stick onto your model. I mentioned this before in the last video, but if you're a DM, you can switch out your models for each of your NPCs, or you can do something a little easier and just make a item set for each NPC and just switch it onto the same model so you don't have to draw like completely different models, just have the same model, different objects and different clothes to indicate different NPCs and whatnot. I think that'd be super cute. I want to try that, but that's a lot of work. But thank you guys for sticking around and staying for this simple model series from start to finish. Hopefully for those who are just starting out with live 2d or vtube studio it helps you out with learning the basics especially for those who are using it for their virtual tabletop rpg sessions hopefully it helps you guys get a little bit more creative with your campaigns and your role playing of course if you guys have any questions feel free to ask below and i will do my best to answer them if i know the answer and i super encourage you guys to go out and look at other tutorials that other people have so you can get even more ideas for what to do with your model and fun fact Live 2D does have a discount going on right now if you're watching this in real time. So if you want to pick up the pro version of Live 2D, 20% off discount. But yeah, I'll see you guys next time. Goodbye!